When somebody plays Karo Khan against you, it is very rare that you can employ an aggressive gambit in the opening stage. Well, in my past, I have created the Spassky Gambit against the Karo Khan. And if you haven't checked it out, you definitely want to have a look at it. But in today's lecture, we are going to see one of the most deadliest and attacking chess gambit against the Karo Khan, starting with bishop to c4. So at first sight, it looks very silly, right? As you allow what black wants to do, d5. But now comes the big idea. Rather than capturing the d-pawn, we are going to play bishop to b3 and gambit the e4 pawn. So in this first episode, we are only going to look at the accept variation and in my next video, we are going to look at the decline part. Okay, D captures E4 and now comes this very nice move, Queen to H5 and this is known as Schaeffer Gambit as well as Hilly Billy Attack. So as you can see, white has break the opening rules and taken out the queen, but it thoroughly justify as we are attacking on f7, and accordingly, black has two choices. Now I have even seen people have played the move knight to f6, where after queen captures f7, black is just losing the battle at the opening stage, but. First, let's start with the main line that is g6, attacking the queen. Please note we are not interested here queen to e5 as after knight to f6, black obtained the good game. But in all these lines, the home for the queen you have to remember is queen to h4, where our queen is nicely situated and if allowed, more or less, we are planning to get our pawn back. Okay, black plays knight to f6, defending on e4. We are going to renew it with knight to c3. And now, three popular choices from the black side. Amongst them, two of them try to hold on to this pawn. And the last one just ignore it and play bishop to g7. Let's start with the bad move first. Queen to d4, at first sight looks like good way to hold on to this pawn. But in fact, after this, white quickly get the upper hand with the following sequence. d3, kindly note that pawn is spin, so black cannot take it. And now if black really want to hold on to this pawn, then he has to play bishop to f5. Afterwards, I propose this nice sequence, knight to f3, attacking the queen, queen to b6, and now pawn takes e4, and believe it or not, but just at the ninth move of the game, black is completely losing. Yup, you can try any bishop moves, all leads to disaster. For example, if bishop goes to c8, then we have this nice move, knight to g5, attacking on f7. And after e6, what else? This nice big sacrifice. Knight captures e6, bishop captures e6, and now very simple choice. Queen captures f6, attacking two locations, so that if black foolishly play rook to g8, then he is going to find out to his horror that after bishop to e6, he can't even touch our bishop. At the end result, he is going to lose his rook on the g8 square. So just 13 move and black is finished on the spot. Well, you might say, hang on, I don't need to play bishop to c8 here. I can play bishop to g4, more aggressive response, attacking the knight, right? 
Nope, more or less same story. We can play knight to g5, attacking on f7. And after e6, yup, you guessed it, e5. And black is losing one of the pieces just within 11th move of the game. So you can see queen to d4 leads to the opening disaster for the black. So by far the main line here is bishop to f5 defending on the e4 pawn. Well after this I am going to recommend you play a true gambit style starting with f3 and the point is after e captures f3 and the moon knight captures f3 just like black ma d more gambit we get open e and f file where we are going to generate a tremendous attack on the black king so after bishop to g7 as you can see i have highlighted by the arrows very simple and effective plan of campaign from the black side is you play d4 followed up with bishop to h6 and knight to g5 where depending on the circumstances we can castle on either side and even though black can see this one is coming the amazing part is there are hardly any ways to defend these threats well to illustrate how we can achieve this in the real game i am going to show you two games so in the first game after d4 black indeed castle on the king side and when white plays the obvious move bishop to h6 he continue with knight to d7 afterward white castle on the king side so it's very important to line up this rook on the f-file so we can sacrifice at some of these black pieces and what really amazed me that if you look at the top choice here from the black namely knight to b6 where black is intending to play knight to d5 completely fails with our obvious move knight to g5 <laughs> and if you think that well it is not going to help it as black can simply respond with the top choice knight b to d5 guess what black has fallen for our most decisive opening trick and before i move on if you want you can pause the video and find out a killer move here from the white i am showing it right now look at this boom <laughs> what a move well we are clearly distracting f5 bishop and no matter however black plays from here he is going to lose the game for example if he continue with bishop takes g4 then the planning of the white is very simple first you take on d5 obviously black cannot take on d5 with the knight as after bishop to h6 and queen captures h7 black king is going to be checkmated so yep c captures d5 is the only response but after this our task is very easy bishop g7 king g7 and now the star move in the picture destroying the defender of that seven with this lovely exchange sack rook takes f6 which happened time and time again in this line what to play it is already looking so bad for the black and just to illustrate how deadly this position is one of my recent game finished very quickly and this is all part of the preparation my opponent played king takes f6 thinking that i am going to escape with my king but look at this rook to e1 closing all doors for the black king and in fact my opponent played the immediate blunder with bishop to h5 which finished the game in just mere two moves 
Did you spot it? Congratulations if you find the move. Knight to e6. <laughs> and after king to f5 and queen to g5, the picture's checkmate occurs on the board. So guys, this is one of the high profile trick in this knight to d5 edition, which you should definitely remember in your own game. So it is pretty clear that if black castles, then he is playing right into the white's hand. So some of the wise black player continue with knight b to d7. And after our bishop to h6, rather than castling and playing into the white hand, they continue with the second most popular choice, namely bishop takes h6. Okay, no issues. We are going to take back with the queen. And now black would love to play knight to g4, but queen to g7 creates some problems. So accordingly, the most famous choice here is queen to c7, trying to castle on the queen side. Well, against this specific variation, I am going to propose you should castle on the queen side so that if black now castle on the queen side, then we can munch on f7 and get our material back. So that's not a good choice for the black. And accordingly, black has tried two majority of the options, either e6 or e5. Now, if your opponent continue with e5, then this is again leads to the opening disaster. As after the simple move, knight to g5, attacking on f7, rook to f8, defending, and now d captures e5, more or less gives white a long-lasting advantage. For example, black's idea is he wants to play knight to g4, not only attacking the queen, but looking at juicy f2 square, whereupon we can defend both of this thread with queen to h4 and after black castle here comes the whole point knight captures f7 winning the whole exchange if black doesn't move the rook then we are happy to chop it off and rook to e8 doesn't stop it as after knight to d6 check king to b8 and the move knight captures e8 not so surprising just within the 18th move of the game, white obtained the exchange. So far, I have reached to this position few times in my game and all of my opponent continue with e6, which looks more natural. So now you defend all of the white thread and ready to castle on the queen side. But I think it has another big drawback and that white can exploit starting with this very nice move, h3. So our idea is very simple. We want to play g4 and trapping down this bishop. And for a time being, this bishop is safe. So my opponents continue with castle on the queen side. But here comes the big surprise. We can play this engine move rook to f1 whereupon black is completely busted to illustrate what is white threat if let's say black plays any casual move king to b8 then after g4 bishop to e4 and the move knight to g5 suddenly black realize that he has completely lost as white has double threat. Number one, capture on e4. Number two, the obvious one, knight f7, and winning the exchange. So that is the big time threat here. And accordingly, in my game, my opponent continue with e5. So his idea is he wants to play bishop to e6 and save his bishop. 
But once again, this g4 move gives white a winning edge after the following sequence. Bishop to e6, knight takes e5, bishop takes b3, pawn takes b3. Now white has a threat of knight to c7. So my opponent took this knight. But what he missed is after rook takes f6, knight to d7 and rook captures f7. Suddenly, not only white is emerging with an extra pawn, but our next move is very obvious. Rook captures h7 and winning yet another pawn, which is in fact happened in the game. Queen to d6 unpinning the knight, but doesn't stop rook captures h7. And the end result with the two pawn advantage, black cannot survive from this position. The third option I want to consider is bishop to g7. So black says, okay, you can have your pawn back, but I'm going to concentrate on my piece development. And yes, indeed, if white wish, he can take it back. But I'm going to propose this straightforward approach, starting with f3. So that after pawn takes and knight takes, the only difference here is, Black has not committed the move bishop to f5. But it doesn't matter to us as our planning of campaign will remain consistent. Let me show you one of my recent game which highlight how good this position is for the white. My opponent castle on the king side. I played d4. And after he continued with bishop to g4, I simply castle on the king side. Black's idea is he wants to get rid of this dangerous knight, but in doing so, he allows my rook swinger, which happens frequently in this line. After knight bd7, bishop to h6, and knight to b6, you can almost guarantee it this is going to happen in most of the games, whereupon I propose this new move, knight to e2, so that if your opponent continue with knight to d5, we can safely play rook to s3, creating a big problem for the black. For example, in the game, my opponent doesn't realize the potential of white in this position and continue with e6. But after just three moves, bishop captures g7, king captures g7, queen to h6 jack, king to g8, and now rook to f1. White has a very simple plan. What he wants to do is, he wants to capture this knight and then do the exchange sack on f6, which, believe it or not, even though black can see it's coming, amazingly enough, he cannot prevent it. Guess what? The engine says there's a mate in sex. <laughs> so this sort of attack you can expect from the hillybilly attack when black accepts our gambit pawn. Now, before we finish, the quick note what to do against the move e6. And I think this is certainly a bad choice due to the obvious reason black made his light square bishop now a passive piece. So a sample line can go like this. Knight to c3, trying to get our pawn back. Knight to f6, defending. And now, yup, the home for our queen h4, so that now we are going to get our pawn back. The only way black can try to hold on to this extra pawn is by playing queen to d4. But as we have seen in the earlier part, this is not the right choice, as after simple move, knight to f3, attacking the queen, queen to b4, now we play 
a3 completely dislodging this queen from the pawn and after queen to b6 and the moon knight captures e4 yup we get our pawn back and the end result is we have once again the simple plan that is play the move d4 take out this bishop and then depending on our choice we can castle on either side where the burning question from the black remained the same what to do with this passive bishop as he already committed the move e6 so this is how you should respond if your opponent continue with e6 that's it guys i hope with this lecture now you're confident enough that when your opponent take the spawn then after queen to h5 no matter however black plays white get very good attacking scheme on the black king and even though in some lines we have to sacrifice a pawn the furious attack and easy to play positions compensate more than enough to give white an entertaining line against the caro khan stay tuned as in my next episode we are going to look at the decline variation and once again i am going to show you some of the nasty surprises from the white side thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment and i will meet you in my next episode very soon bye and take care